When first looking at David Hockney's work at his A Bigger Picture exhibition, I was immediately struck by one thought, his incredible capability of capturing the beautiful moment. From his paintings, I saw his extraordinary view on the world around him, often transforming a scene fairly ordinary, such as the bleak hills in Yorkshire, into one full of vitality and colour. This sparked my thirst for a broad knowledge of Hockney's vast amount of work, and since I had already tasted his landscapes, his portraits attracted my attention. These were far more personal to Hockney himself, and so exploring them gave me an insight into his life which the landscapes didn't give. The landscapes showed me what he saw, while the portraits show me what he felt. Hockney himself said, Faces are the most interesting things that we see. Other people fascinate me, and the most interesting aspect of other people, the point where we go inside them, is the face. It tells all. I have chosen to present my work as a film, as Hockney's beautiful moments have made me want to document mine, and with my own portraits of people, finding the point that we go inside them. David Hockney was born on the 9th of July 1937 in Bradford, England. He studied first at the Bradford School of Art in 1953 to 57 and then at the Royal College of Art, London from 1959 to 62. He recalls, I was taught a lot about drawing in Bradford. Teaching drawing is teaching to look and see. An extremely useful education as it develops the pleasure of looking and then one notices how beautiful the world is. This theme of seeing beyond looking runs throughout his career, as all of his works communicate perfectly a variety of feelings through many imaginative ways, showing his unique outlook on life itself. At the Royal College, Hockney first sees work of American abstract expressionists, such as Willem de Kooning, Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko, with whom some of his own earlier work draws many parallels. Incessantly in the fact you're always waking Get this 
distracted by my music Think of nothing else but art I'll write my loneliness in poems I can just think how to start Dot my eyes with eyebrow pencils Close my eyelids, hide my eyes I'll be idle in my ideals Think of nothing else but art painting is a classic example of a traditional portrait. It shows the subjects in the midst of clues, clues about their lives and their personalities. However, it depicts an untraditional and strained marriage, that of Celia Birtwell, a fabric designer, and fashion designer Ozzy Clark. The most obvious sign of this is the stance and position of Celia and Ozzy. Celia clearly taking dominant position, standing with her hands on her hips and her body face towards her husband in an almost confrontational position. Meanwhile, Ozzy sits laid back and relaxed, with their cat Percy on his lap, which could be interpreted as him being the more nurturing of the couple.
The physical distance between them is the next obvious point of focus in showing the strains in their marriage. They are placed on either sides of the living room, each side being balanced with equal numbers of objects, perhaps showing the living room as a neutral space where they have each the same amount of power. They are split by a surge of light from the balcony, which not only creates a barrier but also shadows across them and the room. The shadows on their faces and on each side of the room can be representing that both Celia and Clark have the same amount of shadows, things they have done wrong and things that bother them. The objects themselves are interesting to examine, Celia having a vase of white lilies, a symbol of grace and femininity, as well as book, showing her interest and possibly even her want of answers, maybe specifically from Ozzy. Ozzy, on the other hand, is represented by a switched off lamp which may be showing his want of finding a light in the situation, and a telephone, maybe telling the viewer that he longs for communication or a helpline. Some of Hockney's most effective portraits are those of people that he had a strong emotional attachment to, particularly those of his lover for five years, Peter Schlesinger. In this painting, he had already split with Schlesinger, so Hockney used a combination of photographs to create it, including ones that Schlesinger had agreed to pose for for professional purposes after their split. Schlesinger is shown looking down into a pool of water with a swimming man, with a look of longing. Clearly. This is Hockney depicting Schlesinger's desire for a new partner, wanting to dive into a new relationship and still further from Hockney. Even though Schlesinger hasn't dived yet, this is Hockney's way of saying that he was sensitive to the signals of Schlesinger's want of leaving, through the passing looks on his face to the slight step he is almost taking towards the pool. The brightness of the colours and Hockney setting this painting as a holiday scene only adds to the bittersweet atmosphere. The more one looks, the more one can see Hockney's pain through his loving depiction of Schlesinger and the distance between Schlesinger and himself, almost as if he is forced to watch Schlesinger slip out of his hands and deep into the water of the pool. Take everything you know and write it on your skin and you can carry on and forget everything Take everything you own and put it in your car You can drive away, drive away so far Then drive into a lake and take off all your clothes Set your clothes on fire, now you are alone But you've got all you know written on your skin So you can carry on and forget everything all the things I'd rather be All the things I'd rather be You can drive away, drive away so far Then drive into a lake and take off all your clothes Set your clothes on fire, now you were alone But you've got all you know written on your skin So you can carry on and forget everything Oh, all the things I'd rather be Hockney is often seen as an artist of the pop art movement, although he rejects this label. 
Pop art is a movement of artists that present a challenge to traditional art, which Hockney certainly did throughout his career in many different ways and mediums. However, pop art often incorporates popular culture such as advertisements, comics and cultural objects, which are not common characteristics of Hockney's work. Comparing, therefore, Hockney's work to the work of other pop artists is interesting. A staple of the movement is Andy Warhol, an American artist working at the same time as Hockney. His work did include popular culture, for example his Campbell Soup Cans, a painting of 32 cans of Campbell Soup, and his various depiction of Hollywood icon Marilyn Monroe, most of which showing the actress in different false colours. At face value, Hockney's work is not much like Warhol's, as Hockney has completely different subjects and intention in his work. However, there are many similarities. Both carefully use colour in order to create an impact, drawing the viewer in and making stronger images. Both have a simplified style. Although mostly naturalistic, they both simplify their subject to create blocks of colours and shapes. And, both the art of Hockney and of Warhol are constantly seen in our popular culture, making their art, quite literally, popular art in itself. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now Hockney is a hugely influential artist, especially to myself. Through this study I've been able to fully understand Hockney as what makes him such an important artist is his unique way of portraying what he sees and what he feels. His art has not only opened me to seeing art in a new light, but also to think about my own perception of the people and world around me, and the power that art has as a form of unique type of communication. And I would say you needed three things to hunt the eye of the heart. 